Hi, I'm Matt Shade Tech. I'm a producer and DJ based in Brooklyn, New York. I'm also the senior logic instructor and course designer for DubSpot and for DubSpot Online. In this video, we're going to continue our series on trap drum programming. In this case, what we're doing is we're creating an instrument setup using Logic's environment and Ultrabeat where we can play some of these fast drum rolls in live using a MIDI controller. The track that you hear behind me, which demonstrates some of this, is called Logos. It's from my album, The Empire Never Ended, which is out on iTunes now. This video is part of a series, so if you didn't see part one, please check that out first, because we're going to continue with the stuff that we set up in that video and develop it a little bit further from there. So let's dig right in. We're going to go back over to the environment where we had some stuff set up. We're going to go to the click and ports layer if we're not there already. And here, you'll see the stuff that we set up in the first video. We've got our cable switcher connected to the input viewer, which is going to turn our drum arpeggiation on and off. We've got our transformer, which is going to choose which notes go to the arpeggiator. And then the sequencer input, which is where the MIDI data will be recorded. What we're going to do is we're going to add the capability to this setup to be able to play another note and trigger a different rate or resolution from the arpeggiator. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy the transformer and arpeggiator that we have set up. You can use Command C as well. And then I'm going to paste it. Note that I deselected the original when I did that. So it didn't replace them or ask me to replace them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom connection on the transformer, which is currently going to the sequencer input, and we're going to select it and clear it. And then we're going to connect that to this new transformer that we created. What that's going to do is going to say any note that is not the D sharp one that we set this to look for is going to get passed out of this through this next transformer. And this is going to check it to see if it's the next note that we're going to look for, which is going to be an E1. So the next note up chromatically. That E1 is going to get passed to this arpeggiator. And what we're going to do, this arpeggiator I've set to eighth notes. This next one, we're going to set to 12th notes, a triplet value. And we're just going to continue that process. So let's do one more. I'm going to copy these now, paste, deselect, and then paste. Move them over here. Where things are placed in the environment doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of cascading them this way so I can kind of see visually what's going on with the data. And then we're going to take this connection, the bottom connection, connect it to the new transformer, tell this transformer to look for the next note up chromatically, which is F1, and set this arpeggiator to the next rate that we're going to use, which will be 16th notes. Now, before we continue further, we're going to need to make sure that those notes have something assigned to them in the Ultrabeat instrument that we're working with. I'll just mute my track for now. And in Ultrabeat, what we're going to do is we're going to take this slot that has the closed hat sample in it, right click on it, choose copy voice and sequence, and let's just label it. We'll label it CH for closed hat. Copy that. Paste voice into the next slot up and the following. And I'm going to do this about six times. So now what I can use is any of these notes are all going to trigger the same hat and I'm going to use them to play the different rates in the arpeggiator. So we've got that set. And so now let's just give it a try. We'll set a loop, turn on our caps lock keyboard. We can play, let's turn this down so it's not so loud. Play our kick, snare and clap. Those aren't arpeggiated, but then when we get to the D, So that's pretty fun. So we can start to play in some of those varying hi-hat rhythms, which are a big component of trap music. Definitely a good moment to pay some respect to Lex Luger and the guys who originated this sound. Some very inspiring rhythmic ideas there, which a lot of people have been picking up on. So definitely credit where credit is due. So what we're going to do is we can continue to build that out, right? I'm not going to do all of them on camera here because that might be a little boring. What I'm going to do is now switch over to another project where I've taken this setup a little bit further to show you some more ideas. Okay, so here I am in my later version of the project, cooking show style, right? We'll pull out the finished casserole here. 
And so what we've got now is I've added in some stuff. First of all, I've added in, right, some more hi-hat resolutions. And you heard there on the H key, we've got some snare rolls as well, which is pretty fun. And so what I've done is just basically continued the setup, right? You'll see here this trend G sharp is going to send a 64th note to the hi-hat, right? So I built out the hi-hat arpeggiation a little further. And then when we get up to A1, this arpeggiator is going to start again with 16th note snares. We've, I skipped the eighth notes for the snares. We've also got 12th note snares and so on. So the other fun thing that I built in here is with these snares, we can also do some pitch modulation, and I'm doing that using the mod wheel on my MIDI controller. And so the way that that is set up, it's pretty simple. That's actually set up in Ultrabeat. Let's just jump back over to the arrange window. We'll open up our Ultrabeat instrument, right? So I've got my setup here with my multiple copies of my snares, right? For each different note for the different arpeggiator. But before I set all those up, what I did was I just took the, the original snare here, Let's just copy the voice. I'll just do it up here in an empty slot. Paste that voice in and I set up that pitch control. So here it is regular. And what I did was here in the modulation area of Ultrabeat, I set it up so that I could control the pitch with the mod wheel. So what we're going to do is we're going to in this modulation slot, we're going to set this value to max, which means it's going to be a continuous value. And we're going to say we're going to do that via control A. In this case, control A is set to controller number one, which is the mod wheel. If you want to change that, you can do it up here. It says MIDI controller assign A is set to value one, the mod wheel. And then what we're going to do is you notice that when I set this, this little line appears here. This is going to set the range that we're going to modulate over. So what I'm going to do is drag this from C3 all the way up to, let's set it to maybe C5, right? And now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be able to trigger this snare. Move the mod wheel and change the pitch of that, right? So we can do fun stuff like this. Some pretty cool little pitched snare rolls. And of course we can do that live in real time. And so I'll show you in the next video some ideas for how to record this data. And we're also gonna add that incredibly important instrument in this kit, the sub bass kick. So far we've just had a kind of a little punch top kick, which I think is important in this kit. But of course the, for, the, for the 808 style trap music that 808 boom is very, very important. So we'll set that up in the next video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. If you'd like to learn more about Logic, you can check us out at dubspot.com where we offer a full 48 class course, both at our school in New York City and online via Dubspot Online. If you'd like to learn more about me and my music, you can check me out at mattshadetech.com. And my album, The Empire Never Ended, is out on iTunes now. Thanks for watching. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.